Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Uh, pretty active night overnight. Uh, not as bad as maybe it could have been, which is good news. But we definitely had, uh, I think, a few tornado warnings ongoing. And actually, we had a tornado warning here right where I live. Um, and it woke me up at around 3.20 a.m. this morning and woke our entire county up. So thankfully, it didn't really end up materializing. Uh, to anything but uh, no confirmed tornadoes so far at least overnight uh, but really I think the biggest day for the tornado threat is going to be today uh, and, and really through the morning hours throughout the afternoon hours really for North Carolina and Virginia so we're going to talk about that right in the beginning of the video but we're also going to talk about the S word which is snow for portions of northern arkansas southeast missouri maybe even western areas far western areas of tennessee kentucky we're going to break that down but stay tuned tonight we'll break that down much more detailed as this could be a little bit of a surprise event uh, for certain people uh, not expecting several inches of snow or anything unless you live on around along the great lakes which will get some pretty intense lake effect snow a pretty a, pr a pretty substantial event for certain areas um, but we'll talk about it all and we'll get much more detail tonight, but we certainly need to focus on this tornado threat today. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, guys. It's just a great way to follow along, Great, a secondary way to get updates and just stay up to date. I try to, especially for my state, um, I, I try to post all the warnings and talk about them. Uh, but I also talk about other regions outside my state here in South Carolina, too. But uh, if you guys got anything I can pray about, pray over it. Please put it in the comments below, as always, so I can pray over it. And I promise you, others will also do, too. So let's get rolling here. Let's take a look at uh, what's left of Nicole. And Nicole is actually a tropical depression, but still looks pretty great. The sun is beginning uh, to uh, rise on the eastern U.S. And as you can tell, you see these banding features right here in this open sector of uh, certain areas. Uh, the sun is going to come out in, in eastern sections of North Carolina and Virginia throughout the morning hours. And that's not a good thing uh, for people who know a little bit about weather. You folks know that. But if you don't know that when you only when the sun comes out on the day where they're calling for storms, especially in the morning hours, uh, that's not good. It helps to uh, destabilize the atmosphere, and the atmosphere atmosphere becomes unstable. Temperature is normally warm, and uh, it's just fuel to the atmosphere. So there's going to be an open sector of warm, moist air that develops here. And along it, with these tropical systems, they bring what we call their own little low-level jets. So winds are going to be whipping. All these storms could have the potential to rotate all the way up to Virginia. In fact, all the way up through uh, Maryland. Uh, so we need to watch out for these areas. We're going to get as detailed as we possibly can. But the tornado threat is beginning to diminish um, from west to east for South Carolina. But it will ramp up for North Carolina and Virginia, especially today. So we actually look at the latest tornado watch that just dropped. This is um, up for now all the way through 3 p.m. Uh, this is almost covering 13 million people. So Raleigh, Fayetteville, Greenville, Jacksonville, Wilmington, Virginia Beach, Richmond, especially later this afternoon. Um, I mean, it, the threat's going to be real here. This says a few tornadoes likely, not possible. So, um, you know, I really think we're going to see a few tornadoes today. I think today will be the biggest tornado threat today. So this is the big watch. You still got a watch that's lingering in South Carolina, but it'll get dismissed a little bit later uh, this morning. But uh, this is the big deal here. So we look at the radar uh, well, let's look at this really quick, um, and this might be a little fuzzy on your screen, but here you go. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center introduced this. It's just a discussion. A new tornado watch will likely be needed, and it's already been dropped because this was actually uh, posted around 537 this morning. But you notice this area, potential greatest tornado threat area, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. This includes Raleigh, big city of Raleigh and uh, all surrounding bigger towns and cities surrounding this. And uh, this will likely get pushed into Virginia a little bit later, but this is a late morning, early afternoon threat, and it's going to really begin to materialize. So we actually look at the, what's left in Nicole. The center of Nicole is just south of Atlanta. No real tornado threat with this. This is just a shield of um, light to moderate, maybe at times heavy rain, some gusty winds probably with this. And this actually would just bring a lot of, 
heavy rain potential for eastern Tennessee and then the mountains of uh, Tennessee and North Carolina. But really, the, the, the big threat today is we'll go to the Wilmington, North Carolina radar here is uh, these feeder bands that are beginning to work their way and will continue to work their way into far eastern South Carolina, but this is starting to shift to North Carolina. All these little feeder bands right into here, working their way inland, uh, this is going to be the storms you need to watch out for. And then there's going to be a sector of warm, moist air that's really going to get cranking up here, and this entire atmosphere is going to destabilize, and, and uh, we really need to watch out for a tornado threat in this area today. This will shift more so into Virginia and probably pretty deep into Virginia a little bit later this afternoon and I really think the afternoon threat will be for Virginia in fact I wouldn't be surprised surprised if Virginia ends up being the epicenter to the highest tornado threat we'll certainly watch uh, today but the storm prediction center is still just a slight risk uh, this is for today this extends from you know a very small section of South Carolina all the way up to you know southern sections of Maryland um, but even in this dark green area you have a tornado risk a two percent risk um, you look at the tornado risk today <coughs> excuse me um, the brown area that is a five percent risk to see a tornado in 25 miles in any given location the green area is a two percent risk to see a tornado in 25 miles in any given location so we're not up to a 10 percent threat yet but let's watch the morning hours to see if it upgrades and let's hope it doesn't. But uh, Raleigh right in here, uh, Richmond right in here. Um, so let's certainly watch. There's going to be a tornado threat that's really going to materialize and begin to develop throughout the late morning hours. You look at the HRRR model, we'll get a closer look at this here in a second um, and see how this develops. Let's get these panels rolling again. And um, this is a much more broader look. Like I said, we'll, we'll get a little closer here in a second. But We'll start this off. You got these feeder bands working in um, offshore, on, well, onshore from offshore. And all these little storms right here, you notice the center of the storm just heavy rain all the way up into Ohio. Uh, but this is that open sector right here that could destabilize, that will destabilize throughout the morning and afternoon hours. And uh, you watch all these little, this little line. Someone will be individual in nature. Maybe even some supercells will try to get developing here. And all these storms, as we get into the afternoon hours, it's starting to get into 3 p.m. The threat really begins to shift to far eastern North Carolina and eastern Virginia. All these storms could spin. They really could. And uh, thankfully, th the good news with this is this looks to really be just a daytime event. Looks like it begins to drop off as the sun goes down. And uh, just the, the, the placement of low pressure begins to shift to a unfavorable condition uh, position for um, that uh, dirty side of the storm. So a much closer look at South Carolina and North Carolina, Virginia up here. As we're rolling through here, notice how these storms look to get very intense. These oranges, reds, yellows right into here. And we're starting to get into the mid-morning hours. You got a cell right here. This is just a model run. We don't know exactly how this is going to unfold. But it uh, looks really sloppy. I can tell you the column is fully saturated, which means it's going to be a messy storm mode. It's not like you're going to have these individual huge supercells like you see out in the Midwest that's going to be discreet. Very messy. Sometimes these can be rain-wrapped and they'll a lot of times with these tropical to tornado threats, these tornadoes drop down really quick and they come right back up. They're normally not long-lived, uh, but you never know when they're going to drop. But here we go. We're getting into 2, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And you see these little mini little cells, very small storms. All of them could be rotating, guys. So it's very important to know that. And uh, I'm sorry, this is getting more so into 3, 4 p.m., but... I mean, do you see these this cell up here in north northern Virginia? I mean, I I can't I can't reiterate it enough, guys. Any of these cells could could drop a tornado. They could. Um, let's hope it doesn't develop into a tornado outbreak. But throughout the evening hours, there's still going to be a lingering tornado threat, even all the way to the far eastern North Carolina, the Outer Banks. Watch out for some water spouts. Uh, but the remnants of Nicole will bring some. Last blast of uh, moderate rain probably through the Carolinas, and then we're done with her. And she's on heading out up to the north, uh, northwest. I'm sorry, northeast. <laughs> but uh, you kind of look at to see how this unfolds today. 
and uh, temperatures notice how they spike in this area to almost 80 degrees in areas of North Carolina stays into the 70s in Virginia so that to me that tells me that the Sun briefly comes out it gets very warm very humid it just feels awful outside uh, but if in fact if you look at dew points here dew points um, already you know very moist out there I mean they're not gonna change much but you notice dew points well into the 70s into uh, this section of Virginia eastern North Carolina so you got enough juice to the atmosphere and then you look at the uh, we'll just look at surface cape in this situation which isn't always the best to look at a lot of times you it's good to look at those mid-level cape but in general you see a lot of juice to the atmosphere uh, surface cape base surface uh, base cape values reaching up 1500 to close to 2000 joules per kilogram that that is pretty substantial when you have a lot of spin in the atmosphere that's why it's very important just just very take this serious there's a lot of fuel to the atmosphere with this open warm and moist sector developing in this section so uh, the tornado parameter um, not always the best thing to look at but it does do a good job of just showing us where the highest tornado threat will be and around midday North Carolina southern to southeast Virginia then we move to just basically central to the entire eastern state of Virginia and uh, you know some of these cells obviously the tornado parameter spikes but in general just know that this entire atmosphere is favorable for quick spin-offs and this even moves up into Washington DC you know let's see if we can move a little bit up here I mean as you can tell I mean the tornado threat very small but gets all the way into southeast Pennsylvania Delaware watch out but diminishes very quickly once it starts to get into Pennsylvania so for my folks in the Northeast I'm done talking about tornado threat you guys stay safe today um, I would not be surprised if we see uh, a tornado caught on film there's a very known well-known storm chaser in, in, um, in Virginia his name is Peter and he seems to always catch these tornadoes he's a very um, knowledgeable dude and a great storm chaser and there's not a lot of great people in Virginia and I'm very interested to see if uh, we legitimately get a few tornadoes out there and I, and I kind of think we will I hope we don't but I think we will um, but widespread rain will move into the mid-Atlantic areas of the Ohio Valley Ohio will see a lot of rain today and uh, just just a shield of heavy rain that will move through New York State Vermont New Hampshire um, you know the as far west as this low pressure is moving now we could just have some scattered maybe showers maybe some storms you know into southern New England throughout the overnight hours the winds will probably be picking up um, we look at the actual uh, 10 millimeter wind speeds knots here and uh, it just shows the idea that it could be quite gusty but I don't think the winds are going to be quite as bad as maybe we thought they were going to be maybe as high as 40 miles per hour as, as possible but it just will kind of just be like a a very quick moving nor'eastern that could affect you guys so I don't think it's anything you guys can't handle we'll try to briefly talk on that tonight but what's wild is this is getting into Saturday by the way but you get a tropical system that moves on out and then you have potentially a burst of snow that moves through areas of southern Indiana Ohio um, we'll watch this and the lake effect snow machines start going crazy we'll talk more on this tonight um, but we'll talk about this right now just because this is, could potentially happen over uh, this evening into overnight this secondary low which will is is eventually going to bring that potential snow that I just showed you in the last panel this develops it has nothing to do with Nicole it's just a, a low pressure that pops up here and with cold air surging down with this cold front um, it could link up with some moisture on the northern end of this precipitation shield and I mean I'm talking 9 10 p.m. tonight maybe areas of northern Arkansas could switch to a burst of maybe some moderate to heavy snow I mean I'm not ruling it out guys and I'm not ruling out a coating on the grassy surfaces and then you know around midnight to 1 a.m. 2 a.m. this could move into southeast Missouri um, just the quiet stage regions in general and, and I really think we'll see some flakes flying around in far western um, Tennessee and uh, certainly in Kentucky and then just a, a shield of maybe some light and maybe moderate snow moves through southern Illinois might wake up to snow flying around in southern Illinois uh, southern Indiana areas of um, Kentucky 
And uh, I, I certainly think it's possible. We'll talk more, a lot more on that tonight, but I will tell you between now and the duration of this event, this is the national blend of all models. You can cut these totals probably in half because of warm uh, soil uh, temperatures. But in general, you see maybe a dusting, maybe maybe an inch, maybe an inch of snow is possible. Southern, I'm sorry, northern um, Arkansas, uh, southeast Missouri, we'll see if we can squeeze out a half an inch of snow. And then far southern Illinois, maybe enough snow to make the grass temporarily white um, overnight into tomorrow morning. And then we switch to, you know, Kentucky. Um, you know, maybe a dusting, guys. What we did, we certainly need to watch um, southern Indiana. I definitely, at minimal, think we're going to see snow flying around. And it's pretty wild how warm we've been, in, even in this area, over the last couple of days. I know a lot of people are going to chirp, uh, chime in and say, there's no way this is going to accumulate. I've seen wilder things happen, guys. I've seen it be in the 70s one day and a major winter storm the next. Um, it even happens here in the Carolinas sometimes when we have these cold air damming situations. So sometimes rates can overcome. Meaning it can snow hard enough that regardless of how warm it's been, it can accumulate. And this might be the case here. So we'll, we'll certainly watch this. Um, interesting day for the Northeast. Uh, cold air, old man winter locks in here. And with that, uh, moisture uh, will fire up for these Great Lakes with just this uh, moist atmosphere over the lakes. And uh, just uh, the warmish the temperatures off the Great Lakes, you know, obviously if the Great Lakes aren't frozen, then they can produce lake effect snow. And then just a snowy day, um, snowy late overnight sets up into tomorrow. And then lake effect snow really begins. Just intermittent kind of snow squalls, snow showers all the way into Illinois, maybe even as far south as Indiana, maybe even to Ohio tomorrow. We'll talk more on this to, tonight and we'll get a little bit more detail. But as far as snow totals between right now and tomorrow morning, several inches of snow is certainly possible, especially this will mainly be overnight for the UP of Michigan and far northern Wisconsin. So um, as far as temperatures today, you're going to have a moving air mass, meaning depending on where you are, temperatures might drop. But I really think if we look at temperatures for the southeast, very moist, and especially if you're in the Carolinas, it's going to be very moist wet for the northeast but if you notice look at this gradient right here this is actually moving with the cold front this is normally right around where high temperatures will occur so you got widespread 60s 70s um, and, and the same areas that could get snow overnight might rise all the way to 70 degrees this afternoon so a very wild cold front you know it's not unusual really it's just a sharp cold front this moves through and it uh, just depends on if you are. It's going to be a tough temperature forecast, obviously, if you live in this region of the country right here because the cold front will be moving through throughout the day. But that's all I got, guys. Stay tuned tonight. We'll get much detail on this cold air mass, and we'll finally be able to slowly go on and get Nicole on out of the way so we can focus in on this massive pattern change and a little bit of winter weather. God bless all y'all. Stay safe out there, especially if you're in eastern North Carolina, Virginia, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.